All right, we are moving on in the how would the red how each team that didn't make the playoffs missed the playoffs, aka 2020 review. We're at our third team that we have been reviewing in this series, and it is the Detroit Red Wings. So the Red Wings, not the best season, and as you can tell from 2017 forward, they have been on a bit of a decline. They went on that 25-year playoff streak, won multiple Stanley Cups in that span, and then when it, when you got to 2009, it just started going down. I mean, they were still making the playoffs, but barely, barely making it. And then they went to the point where they missed it. And now, here we are, where they barely have 20 wins. So, 71 games played, 17 wins. A very miserable season. 49 losses and 5 overtimes. This is one of those truly awful seasons, so I might actually add that to this. Um, 39 points. They're, they were 8th in the Atlantic and 31st in the entire league. Um, the worst team I've ever seen in the era in the Nordic era of me watching hockey. So, not a very good team. The leaders, Dylan Larkin, leads the team with 19, 19 goals, 34 assists for 53 points. It's amazing that Dylan Larkin, yet his team has less than 20 wins. He's still getting above 50 points, and he's still and he he's, he has more points than the Anaheim Ducks than the Anaheim Ducks players, which is actually kind of amazing. Um, Tyler Bertuzzi, 21-27 um, for 48 points. And then finally, number three was Anthony Mantha for 16 goals, 22 assists for 38 points. So, they're still doing decently well points-wise, but, like, they just can't seem to put up goals, and their goal tending is god-awful. Um, Jimmy Howard, two wins the entire season. Two wins. Two wins, 23 losses, and two overtimes. Now, Jonathan Bernier is possibly one of the one most underrated goaltenders in this entire league. And you might be like, Norik, are you actually retarded? Like, no, he's not. But I think he is. I personally think he is. Because 15 wins, and 22, 15 wins, 22 losses, and three overtimes, compared to your starter. At the beginning of the season, Jimmy Howard was your starter. Now he's not. So that is just... So that's amazing that he... Played much better than than Howard when he was the backup, and it proves how good and underrated of a goaltender he is. Um, so that's it, pretty much it for the negative stuff. Now we get on to the um, like the positive stuff. So their cap space, they don't have a lot: one million five hundred fifty-seven, five hundred fifty-seven thousand and five hundred forty-nine dollars. Not a lot. Um, it's less than it's. I think it's less than Buffalo, maybe a little bit more than Anaheim, but I'm not too sure. Um, the players to be excited for from Buffalo, I mean, Buffalo, Detroit, um, there's Philip Zadina, Maurice Sider, and Joe Valeno. Those are the three players that you should be the most excited about. Do I think they'll be better next year? I, um, I don't know, to be honest with you. I don't know if they'll be better or worse, but I think they're going to be, I think they're going to be, I think they'll likely be the same or a little, or a little bit better. Maybe like 20 to... Maybe they'll get like 20, maybe 30 more. Maybe they'll get like maybe a lo over 20 wins next season. But it's still pretty bad. So, I mean, I think they'll be better, but I think they'll be a little bit better. But they won't be like Boston contending better. So, but one thing that will really help them add to those three players that I mentioned to be excited for is their draft selection. So, they select fourth overall. They pretty much lost the draft lottery, which is kind of sad. Because if Detroit, if Detroit got first, that would be perfect. That would be absolutely perfect because they can get anybody in the draft, anyone. Now the only people that I see they can't get are Byfield, Stutzel, and Raymond. Everyone else, I don't think they can get them. Um, so there's Raymond, Cole Perfetti, Rossi, Askarov, Drysdale, and Sanderson. Raymond, Perfetti, Rossi, Drysdale, and Sanderson will really help this team goal scoring wise. I mean, any of those players will help them. And then you, and then you add them to Cider, um, Cider Zadina, and um, Valeno, that would be that would really help this team out. Askarov would also really help this team out because if they get Askarov, their goaltending is solved. I think their goaltending would be solved. I mean, yes, they would have to deal with the deal, deal with Jimmy Howard and Jonathan Bernier for another season unless they go out for some, unless they go out for someone else in free agency, which I don't think they can. So Askarov will be a really good addition. 
if, I mean, like, they're not going to select Asgrove. I don't see them selecting Asgrove. But he's always on the table. So any team that really, any really any team that gets Askarov is going to is pro, is a is a huge deal. In my opinion, that's a huge deal if you get Askarov. This is not just Detroit. I've mentioned this with Anaheim, Buffalo, um, yeah, Detroit. So any team can get Askarov, and it will help out any team. So, but I think it would help with Detroit the most because their starter got two wins, and um, their backup ended becoming the starter because he got fifteen more. He got. 13 more wins than their, their previous starter. So, it's their goaltending is just not very good at all. And I think Askarov will really help with that. So, let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Make sure to leave a like and subscribe. And we're trying to get to 300 by the end of the year. Currently, at the time of recording, this, we're at 228. Thank you guys for watching. And I'll see you guys in the next video.